breaks new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, their star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventure peace overthrows to with their death and their apparent strife. The fearful passage of their death on foe Which of you with patient ears attend? What here shall miss? Our toil shall strive to mend. <laughs> I strike quickly, do you? Move? If thou art not quickly moved to strike. A dog in the house of Montague moves me. The quarrel is between our masters and us, their men. Is all one. Quick, draw thy sword. Here comes two of the house of Montague. My navy weapons out. Hey, Cora, I'll back thee. <laughs> I'll turn thy back and run. Let us take the law of our side. Let them begin. I'll frown as they pass. Let them take it as they list. They as they bear, I will bite my thumb at them. This is a disgrace to them. If they bear it. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law on our side if I say I? Hey, nope. No, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I do bite my thumb, sir. You quarrel, sir. You quarrel, sir, no, sir. If you do, sir, I am for you, for I serve as good as mine as you know better. Well, sir. Say better, here comes one of my master's kingsmen. Yes, better, sir. You lie! Draw up, you men. Gregor, remember lie, swashing low. Put up your sword, you know not what you do! What? Art thou drawn among these heartless hinds? Turn thee, Benvolio, and look upon thy death. I do but keep the peace. Either put up thy sword, or else manage to depart these men with me. What? Drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word, as I hate hell. All Montagues and thee. Have at thee, coward. Clubs, bells, and parties head, try to beat them down! Down with the cabinet! Down with the bar! Down with the cabinet! Give me my one point! Oh! Before the window of the east, so early walking to see your signs. 
I made towards him, but he was where he had stolen to the cover of the wood. Ah, uh, many a morning hath he there been seen, with tears augmenting the fresh morning soon, black and portentous muscles to the less good counsel than the cause of you. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know it nor could I learn of him. Have you importuned him by any means? Both me and many of my friends, for he his own affectionate counselors to himself. I'll see where he comes. So please you step aside. I'll know his spirits be much than I. I would thou wert so happy by thy stay. Come with that. Tomorrow, cuz. Is the day so young? But news struck nine. I me, mean, sad hours seem long. Was that my father that went in so fast? It was. It was sad that lengthens Romeo's hours. Not having that, which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of the favor where I am in love. Where shall we dine? I mean, what fray was here? Yet tell me not fray who heard it all. Here's much to do with hate, but more with love. Oh, why then, oh, brawling love, oh, loving hate? Oh, anything of nothing first create. Dost thou not laugh? No, cause I'd rather weep your heart at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why such is love's transgressions? Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast. Love is a smoke, raised by the fume of sighs. What is it else? A man is most discreet. A choking gall and a preserving sweet. Farewell, my cuz. Soft, I will go along. Tell me in sadness, who is it that you love? In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aim so near, I suppose you love. Well, in that case, you miss. She'll not be hit with Cupid's arrow. She hath Diane's wit, and in strong proof of chastity, well armed. From what weak, childish bow she lives unharmed. She'll not stay the siege of loving terms, nor bide the encounter of assailing eyes, nor ope her lap to say seducing gold. <laughs> oh, she is rich in beauty, only poor. That when she dies, if beauty dies her sore. So she has sworn to still that chase? She hath forsworn to love. And in that vow do I live dead, that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me. Forget to think about her. Oh, teach me how I should forget to think. By like giving liberty unto thine eyes. Examine other beauties. Oh, tis the way to call her exquisite. But in question more, even a stricken blind cannot forget the precious treasure of his eyesight lost. <coughs> Farewell, my cuz. Thou canst teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine, or else die in debt. But Montague is bound, in penalty allowed. Of honorable reckoning are you both, and pity his you who did it odd so long. But now, my lord, what say to you, my suit? The same born, what I have said before. My daughter is yet a stranger in the world, and hath not yet seen shame for fourteen years. Younger than she are many happy mothers me. And to soon mock are those who early may. The earth has swallowed all my hopes but she. She's a hopeful lady in my heart. But woo her gentle pairs, get her heart. My will to her consent is but <coughs> Tonight, I hold an old accustomed feast, where to have invited many a guest. And you, among the store, one more, most welcome, is my number to mourn. At my poor house, look to be all this night. Earth treating stars that make dark heavens light. Such comfort do lusty gentlemen feel, and well apparel they blow the heel of limping winter treads. Among fresh female blood shall you this night inherit at my house. Here all, all see, and like yours most, most whose merit most shall be. Come, go with me. Go, Sarah, trudge up to fair room, find those persons out whose names are written there, and say to them, My house. And welcome them on their pleasure stay. Find them out whose names are written here? It is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard and the tailor with his lath, the fisher with his pencil and the painter with his nets. But I have sent to find them out, whose names are here writ, and can never find what names the writing person hath writ. I must to the learning. In the time. Todd, man, one fire burns out another's burning. 
One's pain is lessened by another's anguish. Take up some new infection into thine eye, and the right poison of the old will die. Why, Bromia, art thou mad? Not mad, but bound more than a madman is. Shut up in prison, kept without my food, whipped and tormented. And... Good in, good fellow. Good, good, good in. I pray, sir, can you read? I am, I know, unfortunately, my misery. Perhaps you have learned it without them, but I pray, can you read anything you see? If I know the letters in the language, he speaks honestly, resting Mary. Stay, good fellow, I can read. <clears throat> Signor Martino and his wife and daughters, County Anselme and his beauteous sisters, Mercutio and his brother Valentine, my uncle Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosaline, Livia, Signor Valentino and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio and the lively Helena, a fair assembly, when should they come? <coughs> Up, with to supper, to our house. Whose house? My master's. Indeed, I should have asked you this before. Now, I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great, rich Catholic. And if you be not of the house of Montagues, I pray, come and crush a cup of wine. Rescue Mary. At this same ancient feast of rich Capulets, such the fair Rosaline, who thou so lovest, with all the admired beauties of Verona. So come, <coughs> unattained I, compare her face to something I shall show. You shall think thy swan a crow. When the devout religion of mine eye contains such falsehood, turn tears to fire. One fairer than my love, the all seeing sun ne'er saw her match since the world first begun. But you saw her fair, not else being by. I'll go along, no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in the splendor of mine own. <coughs> Thank you. 
Jesus. Shall we own without apology? Nay, hey, Romeo, we'll measure them a measure and be gone. Give me a torch, I am not for this family. Being but heavy, I will bear the light. Nay, hey, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. <laughs> not I, believe me, for you have dancing shoes with nimble souls. I have a soul of lead. You are a lover. Borrow Cupid's wings. <laughs> Give me some case to put my visage in. A torch for me. Let wantons light of heart tickle the senseless rushes with their heels. I'll be a candle holder and look on. We mean well in going to this mass, but tis no way to go. Why, may I ask? I dreamed a dream tonight, and so did I. Well, what was yours? The dreamers often lie. And better sleep while they do dream things true. Oh, then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife, and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with the team of little athletes <laughs> atop men's nose. As they lie asleep, for wagons folks made of long spinner's legs, <laughs> traces of the smallest spider's web. The colors of the moonshine's watery beam, for width of cricket bone, the lash of film. The wagon a small, gray coated gnat, not half so big as a round little worm, pricked from the lazy finger of a maid. The chariot is an empty hazelnut made by the joiner squirrel or an old drug. Time out of mind, the fairy's coachmaker. And in this state, she gallops night by night, lovers brains, and then they dream of love. Sometimes she gallops over a courteous nose and then dreams he of smelling out a soup. <laughs> and sometimes comes she with a tied pig's tail, tickling a parson's nose <laughs> as it lies asleep. And then dreams he of another benefice. Sometimes she gallops over a soldier's neck. And then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breaches, of muscados, of hell's five fathom deep. And then an arm drums in his ears. At which he stops and waits, and being thus frightened, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. This is the very man. Peace, Mercutio, peace. Thou talkst of nothing. True. <laughs> What lady is that that doth enrich the hand of yonder knight? I 
soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. It is my lady, oh, it is my love, oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. No, I am too bold. It's not to me she speaks. Who of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were bare, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight got the lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright the birds would sing and think it were not night. Oh, see how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were in love upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak of this? Tis but thy name that is my end. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? <coughs> it is nor hand, nor foot, <coughs> nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. <laughs> oh, be some other name. What's a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell of sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo doth thy name and for thy name, which is no part of thee. Take all the stuff. I take thee at thy word. Call me the love and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth I shall never be Romeo. What manner doth let the screen and night so stumbled upon your counsel? By a name, I know not how to tell thee who I am. For my name, dear saint, is hateful to myself. Because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of thy tongue's uttering. Yet I know the sound. Are there not Romeo and Montague? Neither, fair saint, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? And wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb in the place of death, considering who thou art if any of my kinsmen find thee here. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death her own, wanting of thy love. By whose direction thou didst thou out this way? By love, who first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him eyes. I am no pilot, but wert thou as far as the vast shore washed by the furthest sea, I would adventure for such merchandise. Thou knowest the mask of night is on our face. Else would have made me blush to paint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak to me. Fain would I dwell on the floor. Fain, fain deny what I have spoken. But fair will comfort. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayest prove false. At lovers perjury, they say they don't love. Be gentle, Romeo, if thou dost love, renounce the faithful. Or if thou thinkst I'm too quickly won. I'll frown if you prefer her to say the so that I will prove. But else, <coughs> not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond. Therefore thou mayest take my hand in light. But trust me, gentlemen, I'll look more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. <laughs> I should have been more strange, I must confess. But that thou overheard, Sarah, was where my true love's passion. Therefore, pardon me. And not impute the yielding to thy promise without knowing the first time. Lady, by yonder blessed moon I swear with silver, all these fruit tree tops. Swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon that must have changed in the circle of the world, that thy love could likewise bear with us? Then what shall I swear by? You have to swear all. <coughs> or thou wilt swear by thy gracious self, which is the God of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. Lady, if 
my heart's dear love. I do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy in the contact of earth. It is too rash, too unbody, too sudden. Too much like the lightning which does cease to be ere when you say it's lightning. Please, 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 Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? This satisfaction can't tell how to. The exchange of thy love faithful, thou for mine. I gave thee for thy disrespected. And yet, I wouldn't work to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? Let me be frank and give it thee again. And yet, I wish but for the thing I have. For thou leave the sound of the sea, my love is deep. The more I give me, the more I have, the more there is me. Oh, I hear some noise within. Do not do. I'm not a good nurse. <coughs> Sweet mom, to be true. Stay with me, I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I am a feared being in night. All this is but a dream, too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, and do that indeed. That thy bed not be honorable, thy purpose marriage. Send me word tomorrow by one that I'll cure to come to thee, where in that time thou wilt perform the right. And all my fortunes in thy far away, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. I know! I come it on! But if thou weep not well, I do beseech thee. Why? Why I come? To cease thy suit and lead me to my grief, tomorrow will I send. So thrive, my soul! Fall upon mine eyes, peace in my breast. Or would I were sleep in peace so sweet to rest? Hence will I in my ghostly father's chamber, his help to crave and my dear half to tell. Your cage of ours, a baleful weed, and precious juice of life. Oh, 
will make the most powerful race that lies. And herbs, plants, stones, and their true qualities. We're not so vile on the earth that live, but to the earth some special good that give. We can hit the grind of this small flower. Poison that residence, and then some power. To such opposing kings and camp them still. In man as well as herbs, praising we will. Good morrow, father. Been an easy day. What early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Or else, and here I pin it right, our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. That last is true, the sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin! <laughs> What's that with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my ghostly father, no. I have forgotten that name, and that name's woe. That's my good son. But where hast thou been then? I'll tell you ere thou askest me again. I was feasting with mine enemy. Where on a sudden, one half wounded me. That's by me wounded. Both our remedies in your help and holy physic lie. Be plain, good son, and holy in thy breast. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine. And all combined, say what thou must combine, with holy marriage. This I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy Saint Francis, what a change is here. Is Rosaline without its love so dear, so soon forsaken? Oh, young men's love that lies, not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> and art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Who then may fall where there's no strength in men? Chidest me out for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. Well, I pray thee, chide not. For she whom I love now, doth grace for grace, and love for love allow. The other did not so. Oh, she knew well. I love to read my rote and could not spell. But come, come, young laborer, go with me. In what respect I'll thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn thy household rancor into pure love. I will with thee hence, I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow, they stumble at run fast. <laughs> Peter, to hide it in her face, or the fans to bear her face, 
is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant as gentle as a lamb. Well, go thy ways, wench. So God. What? Have you found it home? No, but all this I didn't know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Oh! Oh, how my head aches! Oh, what a head have I! It beats as though it would fall in twenty pieces. And my back, my back, on the other side, my back. <laughs>
Gentlemen, good day. A word with one of you? And but a word with one of us. Couple it with something. Make it a word and a blow. You shall find me out enough to that, sir. And you will give me occasion. Cats out, I'll take the occasion. Without giving. Crucio, thou consorce with Romeo. Concert, what? Dost thou make minstrels of us? And if thou make minstrels of us, look to hear nothing but this cause. Here is my fiddlestick. That which will make you dance. Zounds, consort! You talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw into some private place and reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes are made to look, and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. I'll be hanged, sir, if you were. You all agree. Romeo, the hate I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tibble, the reason I must love thee doth much excuse the appetizing rage to such a greeting. Villain am I not, therefore farewell, I see thou knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries thou hast caused me. Therefore turn and draw. I must protest I never injured thee. Therefore, dear Capulet, whose name I tender dearly as mine own, be satisfied. O oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission, Alice Connor carries it away. Tibble, you rat catcher, will you walk? What would you have? Homer's too? Aye, Fulgur, lips that they must use in prayer. Oh, then, dear saint, let lips do what hands do. Saints do not move. The rent for prayers. Then move not, while my prayers affect I take. Thus from my lips. By yours my sin is purged. Then have my lips the sin that they have took. Sin from my lips? O oh, trespass sweetly urged, give me my sin again. Center out. 
among the fairest stars in all the heaven. Having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were bare, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight got the lamp. Her eyes in heaven would through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. Oh, see how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were in love upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. Satisfied? <laughs> 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 the exchange of my love 
faithful about for mine. Again, for that is the question. And yet, I wouldn't work to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose, love? But to be frank and give it to you again. And yet I wish but for the thing I have. For thou is as boundless as the sea. My love is deep. The more it gives me, the more I have. The more there is it. Oh, I hear some noise within. Do you love it too? I love good nurse. <coughs> Sweet mom, to be true. Stay with me, I will come again. Oh, blessed, blessed night. I am a fear of being in night. All this is but a dream, too flattering sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. That thy bed has not be honorable, thy purpose marriage. Then we go tomorrow by one that I'll cure to come to thee, wherein that time thou look upon the right. And all my fortune to thy for our way, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. my soul. Fall upon mine eyes, peace in my breast. Or would I were sleep in peace, so sweet to rest? Hence will I in my ghostly father's chamber, his help to crave and my dear half to tell. streets of light, ere the sun advances burning eye, the day to cheer and night's day to do to dry. I must hold this last year cage of ours, a baleful weeds and precious juice flowers. Oh, maybe it was a powerful grace that lies in herbs, plants, stones, and the true qualities. For not so vile on the earth that live, but to the earth some special good that give. Can the infant rind of this small flower, poison that residence, and some power. Such opposing kings and captains still, in man as well as herbs, praising we will. Good morrow, Father. Been an easy day. What early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Or else, and here I pin it right, our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. That last is true, the sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin! What's that with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my ghostly father, no. 
I've forgotten that name, and that name's Woe. That's my good son. But where hast thou been then? I'll tell you, ere thou askest me again. I was feasting with mine enemy, where on a sudden one hath wounded me. That's by me wounded. Both our remedies in your help and holy physic lie. Be plain, good son, and holy in thy drift. Riddling confession finds but riddling shrift. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on her, so hers is set on mine. And all combine, say what thou must combine, with holy marriage. This I pray, that thou consent to marry us today. Holy Saint Francis, what a change is here! Is Rosaline without its love so dear, so soon forsaken? Oh, young men's love that lies, not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. <laughs> and art thou changed? Pronounce this sentence then. Who then may fall when there's no strength in men? Now chidest me out for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, the pupil mine. Well, I pray thee, chide not, for she whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. Oh, she knew well. I loved it read by wrote and could not spell. But come, come, young waverer, go with me. In what respect I'll thy assistant be? For this alliance may so happy prove to turn thy household rancor into pure love. I will with thee hence, I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow, they stumble and run fast. <laughs> Dinner. 
thither. I will follow you. Farewell, ancient lady. Lady, lady, ancient lady. Mary, farewell. I pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his robbery? A gentleman, nurse, who loves to hear himself talk. And he'll speak more in a minute that will stand to in a month. And he'll speak anything against me, I'll take him down. And I want a lost year than he is. And twenty such jacks. And if I cannot, I will find those that shall. Now, poor God, I am so vexed that every part of me quiver. Stay in! Now, pray you, sir, a word. As I told you, my young lady bade me inquire me out. What she bade me say, I will keep to myself. But first let me tell you, if you should leave her in a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behavior, as they say, for the gentlewoman is young. Nurse, commit me to thy lady and mistress, I protest unto thee. Good heart and faith, I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her? Thou dost not mark me. I will tell her that she do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentleman like offer. And bid her to mind some means to come to strip this enemy. And there she will, at Friar Lawrence's cell, be shrived and married. Here is for thy pain. Oh, no, truly, sir. Oh, is not a penny? <laughs> Go to, I say you shall. Well, this afternoon, sir, she shall be there. And stay, good nurse, behind the abbey wall. Within this hour, my man will be with thee to bring thee cords made like a tackled stair, which to the high top gallant of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. Farewell, be trusty, and I will end thy appearance. Farewell, commit me to thy mistress. Aye, aye, a thousand times. Peter! Anon. Peter, take my fan and go before. <laughs> <laughs> The clock struck nine when I had sent the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. Perchance she did not leave me. That's not so. Oh, she's lame. Love's heralds should be thought. Which ten times faster than the sun's beams lie. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine to twelve is three long hours. Yet she is not come. Had she affections and warm youthful blood, my words would bandy her to my sweet love and he is to me. Oh, oh God, she comes. Oh, honey, nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? Let thy man away. He shall stand in gate. Oh, oh Lord, why lookst thou sad? Though news be sad, yet tell the mirror. I am ever weary. Give me leave a while. Oh, I how my bones ache. What the joke have I had? Oh, but would thou hast my bones and I thy news? Nay, come, my pretty, speak. Good, good nurse, speak. Yes, Sue, what haste? Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? <laughs> Let me be satisfied. Is it, is it good news or bad news? Oh, um, is it good or bad? Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Huh. Romeo, no, not he. <laughs> Though his face be better than any man's, it is leg itself only. <coughs> For a hand and a foot and a body, though they be not talked upon, yet they are past content. He is not the flower of courtesy, but I warrant as gentle as a lamb. Well, go thy ways, wench. So, God. What? Have you found it home? No, but all this I didn't know before. What says he of a marriage? What of that? Oh! Oh, how my head aches! Oh, what a head have I! It beat as well as before in twenty pieces. And my back, my back, on the other side, my back. <laughs> Wish for your heart for sending me about to catch my death with Johnson and death. Faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. 
Wow. Sweet, sweet, sweet nerves. Tell me what says my love. Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and a hat, and a word, a virtuous. Like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? <laughs> of course, lady dear! Is this the poultice for my aching bones? It's for you your messages yourself. Oh, here's such a coil. Come on, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to be tripped today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Oh, now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. They'll be in scarlet straight if any news. Page to the cell, I must in another way to fetch a ladder by the which your love must climb a boat's nest soon when it is dark. <coughs> and the twirl and trudge in your delight, but you shall bear the burden soon at night. Go, after dinner, hang to the cell. I have a fortune. On his nerves, farewell. Upon this holy act that after hours of sorrow China smile. Amen, amen. Come what sorrows can. It cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one minute gives me in her sight. Do but close our hands with holy words, and love devouring death, do what he dare. It is enough that I may call her mine. These violent delights have violent ends, and in their prime die. Therefore, love moderately, long love us so. Too swift arrives as tardy is too slow. Here comes the lady. Oh, so light it. But we'll never wear out the everlasting flame. Good evening to my ghostly confessor. Romeo will thank you, daughter, for us both. As much to him, else is his thanks too much. Ah, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbor air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive and even the spirit counter. They are but beggars that can count their worth. But my true love has grown to such excess that I cannot sum up, sum up half my wealth. <coughs> come, come, come with me and we will make short work. By your leaves, you shall not stay alone. The Holy Church incorporates you in one. Consort, what? Dost thou make minstrel 
of us, and if thou make minstrels of us, look to hear nothing but this cause. Here is my real stick, that which will make you dance. Zounds, Pesach! You talk here in the public haunt of men. Either withdraw into some private place and reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart. Here all eyes gaze on us. Men's eyes are made to look, and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. I'll be hanged, sir, if you were you all agree. Romeo, the hate I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason I must love thee doth much excuse the appetizing rage to such a greeting. Villain am I not, therefore farewell, as see thou knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries thou hast caused me. <laughs> therefore turn and draw. I must protest I never injured thee. Therefore, dear Capulet, whose name I tender dearly is mine own, be satisfied. O oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission, Alice the Connor carries it away. Tibble, you rat catcher, will you walk? What would you have with me? Prince of cats, lies. Will you pluck your sword out of his pilcher by the air? Make haste, lest mine be about your ear. Ear be out. I am for you. Put up thy red beard, General Mercutio. Come, sir. Your sorrow. Drop this folly of feet down your weapon. Give a big bird's name for a man that's outraged. Oh, give a good Mercutio. Ah! I have had a flag about your house. Again. Alive and alive, and Mercutio slain? 
Away to heaven, respect divinity, and fire eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take thy villain back again that late thou gavest me. For Mercutio's soul is but a little above our heads, awaiting for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy that did consort him here shall with him hence. This shall determine that!
here by his manly friends. A piteous corpse, a bloody piteous corpse. Oh, we don't do blood. Oh, in gold blood. I swear to the sun. Break my heart. Poor bankrupt, break it once. To prison eyes dare look on liberty. Tibbles, Tibbles, the best friend I had. Courteous Tibbles, honest gentleman, that I should ever live to see you dead. What storm is it that blows so contrary? Is Rogan slaughtered and Tibbles dead? Tibbles is gone, and Romeo vanished. Romeo then killed him. <coughs> he is vanished.
Do not say banishment. Heads from Verona are now banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls. But hell, purgatory, torture. Oh, then we said, oh, rude unthankfulness. Thy fault our lot calls death, but the kind brings taking thy fault. Now brush aside the law and turn that black with death into exile. This is fair mercy, and thou seest it not. Thou canst not speak of what thou dost not feel. Were thou as young as I, Juliet thy love, an hour but married, Tybalt slain, doting like me and like me banished, then might thou speak, then might thou tear thy hair, and throw thyself on the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. All right, what not? Good morning, I'll hide myself. Not I. Hark, I lay not. Good morning, I'll arise. I will be taken. Stand up! Stay a while! Run to my study! I come, I come! God's will! Who knocks on the loud? What symbol means to this? Whence come you? What's your will? Let me in! You shall know my errand! I come from Lady Juliet! Welcome, then. <coughs> oh, holy friar! What's coming, holy friar? Where is my lady's lord? Where is Romeo? There on the ground. His own tears made me drunk. <laughs> is even in my mistress' case, just in her case. Even so lies she, blubbering and weeping, weeping and blubbering. Stand up! Stand up! Stand and you be a man. For Juliet's sake, rise and stand. Nurse. Now, oh, sir, will this be in the hall? Speakest thou of Juliet? How is it with her? Oh, she just weeps and weeps, and falls on her bed, and then stops up. And on Tybalt calls him, and on Romeo cries, and he falls down again. As if that name shot from a deadly level of, of a gun did murder her. Oh, tell me, Friar, what part of this violent anatomy doth my name lodge, that I may sack that hateful mansion! Hold my desperate hand! Art thou a man? Thy form cries out, thou art. Thy tears are womanish. Thy wild acts denote the original fury of a beast. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Will you slay thyself, and slay thy lady to listen to thee, in doing thee and pay upon thyself? What rouse thee, man? Thy Juliet is alive, whose dear sake thou hast but lately dead. Then art thou happy? Tibble would slay thee, if thou killest Tibble. Then art thou happy too. A wild friend's death becomes thy friend, and changes death into exile. There art thou happy. A pack of blessings lights upon thy back. Go, give thee thy love, and some comfort her. Ascend her chamber of the degrees. But what thou sayest not to the watch be set, and then thou canst not cast me into it. Where thou shalt stay till we can find a way to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, make partner with the prince, and bring thee forth with one hundred thousand times more joy than thou wilt forth in lamentation. Go before, nurse, bend me to my lady. Romeo is coming. With that a joy past the joy calls out on me. It were a grief, too brief to part with me. Farewell. She loved her kinsman to do, and so did I. Well, we were born to that. Tis very late, should not come down to me. These times are well before the time is good. Madame, good night. Commend me to you. I will. I know her mind. <coughs> Early tomorrow. Tonight, she's mewed up to her heaviness. Wife, go to Juliet, ere you go to bed. Acquaint you here, my son Paris is well, and bid her march in. But so, what day is it? Monday, my lord. <sighs> Monday. Well, Wednesday's too soon. Oh, Thursday. Oh, Thursday be it. She shall be marked this noble girl. But what say you to it? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Oh, Thursday be it. Get you going. Wife, go to Juliet. Prepare her against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord. <coughs>
harp, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. <coughs> Look, love, what in these streaks to lace the severing clouds of yonder east. Jock and day stands tiptoe on the misty mountain tops, and night's candles are burnt out. I must be gone and live, or stay and die. Your mind is not daylight. I know it. It is so near that the sun is pale to be to you this night at Torch Fair, and light me on my way to Mantua. Therefore, thou needs not to be gone. Let me be taken. Let me be put to death. I am content that thou wilt have it so. I'll say yon gray is not the morning's eye, tis but a pale reflex of Cynthia's brow. Nor that is not the lark whose notes do beat the vaulty heavens so high above our heads. I have more care to stay than will to go. Come, death and welcome. Juliet wills it so. How is my soul? It's talk. It is not there. More light and light, more dark and darker woes. <coughs> Madam, nurse, your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke, be wary, look about. I know. Let's say me in. I'm not my Farewell. Farewell. Ever more sound. How now, thy figures deliver to her a high degree. 
If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams foresaw some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and all this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me high above the ground with cheerful thoughts. News from Verona! How now, Balthazar? How is my Juliet? Is my father well? Hast thou no letters from the friar? How fares my Juliet? For nothing can be ill if she be well. And she is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capo's monument, and her memorial pot with angels lives. I saw her laid low in her kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it you. Is it even so? Then I defy you, stars! Thou knowest my lodging. Give me ink and vapor and hire post horses. I will hence tonight. Hast thou no letters for me from the friar? Oh, my good lord. No matter. Get thee gone and hire those horses. I will be with thee straight. Well, Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Let's see for means. Oh, mischief, thou art quick to enter in the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary, and hereabouts he dwells. Noting this penury to myself, I said, And if a man did need poison who sail his present death in Mantua, here is a caitiff wretch would sell it him. The same thought did but for on my need, and the same needy man must sell it me now. If I remember, this should be his house. Being holiday, the beggar's shop is shut. What ho, apothecary! Who goes so loud? Come hither, man, I see thou art poor. <laughs> Hold, here's forty ducats. Give me a drama of poison whose such soon speeding gear will disperse itself through all the veins. And may the life weary take her fall dead. Such mortal drugs I have, with matchless lies death, and he that uttereth them. Art thou so bare and full of wretchedness, and fears to die? Fame is in thy cheeks, need and oppression starveth in thine eyes. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world hath no law to make thee rich. Therefore be not poor, but break it, and take this. My poverty, not my will, consents. I pay thy poverty, and not thy will. Take this. Put it in any liquid that you will and drink it all. And if you had the strength of twenty men, it would dispatch you straight. Here's thy gold. Worse the poison to men's souls than these poor compounds thou mayest not sell. Farewell. Buy food. Get thyself in flesh. Come cordial and not poison. Go with me to Juliet's grave. For there must I use thee. Now must I have the monument alone. 
Within, within these three hours, the fair Juliet wake. But I will write again to Mantua and keep her at my cell till Romeo come. Poor living corpse, closed in a dead man's tomb. Open this 
you. And leave me with Juliet. In faith I will. Let me peruse this face. Tis the Mercutio's kinsman, noble county Paris. Oh, what said my man when my betossed soul did not attend him as we rode? I think he told me Paris should have married Juliet. Give me thy hands. I will bury thee in a triumphant grave.
I hear some noise. Lady, come away from that nest of death, contagion, and natural sleep. Greater power than we can contradict that for our intents. Thy husband and thy bosom there lies dead. In Paris, too. Come, I'll dispose of thee among the sisters of holy nuns. Stay not the question, for the watch is coming. Come, go, you Juliet, I dare no longer stay. about the churchyard. Critical sight. Here lies the county slain and Juliet bleeding. Woman newly dead. Who here has lain this two days buried? Go tell the prince. Run to the capitalists. Rise up the Montagues, the mother's thatch! <coughs> we see the ground whereon these woes do lie. For the true ground of all these piteous woes, we cannot without circumstance describe. <coughs> Here's Romeo's man, he's found in the church. Fold him safely until the prince come hither. Here's a friar that trembles, sighs, and weeps. He took his mattock and his spade from him as he was running the courtyard side. A great suspicion. Stay the friar, too. What we suspect is so early as they calls our person from our morning rest? What should it be that is so shrewd to draw? All the people in the streets crowd Romeo. Some Juliet and others Paris. And all right with open outcry towards our monument. What fear is this that startles in your ears? Sovereign. Here lies the county Paris slain, and Romeo dead. 
Enjoy it. Yeah, before.